And with the delivery of those three boxes, I had received the ZWO AM5 mount. Simple to carry, everything in one bundle. I received the shipment just in time to accompany me to the Almost Heaven Star Party at the Experience Learning Center on Spruce Knob. So let's head out to the field for first light with the mount. This is first night. I'm at the Almost Heaven Star Party. And we are doing our first calibration of the mount using the ZWO 120mm All right, let's see how this thing settles down. I didn't have much time to do anything in the daylight. And this literally is first calibration, first light, first guiding. And it looks like we're hanging in there okay. Okay, we're on August 28th. We're at the Almost Heaven Star Party. This is night. Saturday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning. And this will be really the first night I've had a chance to really get the AM5 dialed in. The first night we had, it was partly cloudy and I just wasn't able to get things going. But this is our first image. This was a 10 minute exposure, auto guided. Of course, it's time for an annual visit to M31 and you can see these stars are pretty much perfect down to the sub-pixel level. And so that's, I'm pretty happy with that. Everything has gone very well. Let me show you. Just, uh, this is the auto guiding. And <clears throat> even though I have a pretty large periodic error over the entire course of the, the drive period, it's it's easily guided out and you can see my ASI air settings here. I have the aggressiveness set at 55s on both RA and deck after a calibration. I calibrated right around the M31 field and uh, so everything seems to be going very well. I hope I don't jinx it but we have really nice skies right now and hoping to get um, several hours of the oh yeah the go-to worked perfectly denied. I actually had a little bit of a glitch on the first night. Again, I'm not sure. It, it was partly cloudy. Things were just getting interrupted. But for a nice clear sky, I was able to go through the process very systematically and the go-to worked perfectly tonight. And polar alignment worked perfectly and it's very simple. One really nice feature of the AM5 mount is the capability to control it remotely and you don't need an ASI Air or any other interface. You simply use the Wi-Fi that is connected through the hand controller and here it's the AMH 540514 and then there is the AM5 app, AM ASI mount when you start up from the home position, and I'm at Polaris, so that's that's correct. So let me, what I was doing was framing the uh, California Nebula. I just put the cross there, and I say go, and the mount, maybe you can hear it. It's a very quiet slew, and it will not confirm that it, you know, it doesn't do a plate solve like you do with ASI Air. But if you are a DSLR user and you do not want to have an ASI Air interface, go to telescope that can give you the field of view, give you a nice planetarium interface. This is a really nice option. And uh, you just are still going to have to auto guide. And you're going to have to have an interface for that. But I really like what they've done here with this mount, and I look forward to some of the uh, some of the things that they're going to offer us in the future. So, what was in those UPS boxes, and what are we talking about? We are talking about the harmonic drive, 
new from ZWO called the AM5. Now, I'm not going to get into the details on what a harmonic drive is. I'm going to post links to YouTube videos that do a much better job of describing a harmonic drive. But the benefits of a harmonic drive for astrophotography are a lightweight design with a strong load capacity. The AM5 is a 12 pound mount or 5.5 kilograms, but without a counterweight, it can carry 28.6 pounds or 13 kilograms. And it can also operate in an equatorial or azimuth configuration. One of the main reasons I purchased this setup and for you to consider it is the lightweight and the compactness of the entire setup. I went with the ZWO carbon fiber tripod. It has the bag here to help add a counterweight for additional stability. The tripod and the mount go in these two bags. Incredibly compact, very easy to put on an airline and is the big reason why I went with this setup. We are set up for hydrogen alpha solar observing today wanted to give you a little bit of feedback on my first night polar aligning. Of course, the days of polar scopes have come and gone. We're now using digital software for polar alignment, and in my case, I'm using the ASI Air software. And what I like about the AM5 are the altitude and azimuth adjustments are both in the same location. So I set my iPad on my chair, have my polar alignment routine running on the ASI Air app, and I'm able to make the adjustments just after visually lining up the axis with Polaris. And it was just as easy as any other polar alignment I've been through with polar scopes and digital scopes and things like that. So this worked. The only concern I have is these are really elongated knobs. You can see they protrude out from the side, plus and minus. You can see here there is a lot of movement in both axes. So that's nice because they give you some opportunity to be off on your initial alignment so you don't have to reset your tripod. Now the nice thing I did with this tripod I'll show you when I tear down is I have the spikes. The spikes for feet. So the spikes are really set in there. This is a very stable setup. I did not go with a pier yet. I like a low profile setup. While we're here at the Almost Heaven Star Party, Spruce Knob is right up there where you see that tower. 4,800 feet, we're about 4,000 feet. But there can be significant winds, and I like this low profile without the pier. But back to the adjustment knobs. You can see they're elongated. They do extend out from the body. This is the altitude adjustment. And, you know, it's, it's a nice, it works very well. And I also have the clamping knob here that seats the base of the, the mount. And I'll show you that in a little bit. But uh, polar alignment went extremely easy using the ASI Air Pro with the, the very forgiving adjustment links that you have on altitude and uh, azimuth. The mount has a DC 12 volt 3 amp output and a finder shoe where I incorrectly put the ZWO ASI Air. ZWO wants you to put that on the declination axis. This is your scale, can help you with some rough latitude adjustments and then you also have a locking screws with these elongated tabs for locking the base to the tripod. Here's where you're going to make all of your connections and get a little bit of information. The status light will be red when the mount is in equatorial mode and green when it's in alt-as mode. I connect my ASI Air to the USB port here so my mount can talk to the ASI Air. There's a standard SD4 auto guider port as well as the hand controller port is next to the right and then you have a 12 volt 5 amp input to power the mount. This is the lightweight TC40 carbon fiber tripod with a spreader bar that really provides a stable platform. This is the rocker style hand controller connected by wire to the mount but provides your Wi-Fi interface. Touching T 
starts the mount in tracking. You can depress the joystick to go from slow mode into fast mode. and depressing that refresh button sends it to home. We are around December 18th. We got a chilly night, but it is supposed to clear off according to all of my forecast sites. And it looks like it is moving in the right direction. I just wanted to offer some final thoughts. I've had this AM5 mount now since August and I've had it out several nights. And as you can see, I have, this is about the third night I've used the Rasa on it. And I have some thoughts to share with you on that. So tonight you can see I'm going with a little different setup. Now I have used this three or four times without videoing. And that's the Rasa 8 inch on the AM5 mount. And I just wanted to do this in a conversation about what scopes feel comfortable on the mount. This is an 8 inch, not quite as heavy probably as a traditional 8 inch SCT. I do see people using 8 inches. I've seen 11 inches. And I can say that the counterweight shaft and a weight would mean a lot here to stabilize this, but it, that kind of takes away from the portability that I'm looking for. So bottom line, here's what my experience has been with this Rasa. It works fine. I use the lightweight tripod, which is a huge advantage with the spiked feet in the ground. And I think that I've never had an issue with it um, you know, getting into that zenith position. And feeling like it's been compromised. Now the nice thing I really like about the AM5 mount with the ZWASI Air is the Meridian lock and stop position works great. And the Meridian flip works fantastic. So you lose maybe, oh, 10 minutes in going uh, across the meridian with an object. But I find that to be a very nice compromise for con lack of a reduced anxiety about having a, um, a potential crash with the mount. So I leave all of the defaults on with the Rasa. So I would say, in my opinion... <laughs> I probably, I would probably have a counterweight shaft for my backyard. This, I literally, this is two trips for me to set this up. So that's incredibly convenient. Maybe if I had a counterweight and a counterweight shaft that might add or complicate one of those trips. So that's why I haven't done it. And the counterweights are on back, the counterweight shafts are on back order, so you can't even get them. I can tell you that the ASI, the ZWO AM5 mount, with that 92 millimeter refractor, my astrophysics and the guide scope. Wow, what a beautiful portable, I believe an airline portable for the first time for me, an airline portable type setup. The Ross is fine. I use it in these situations where I want a quick setup and convenient. And I'll show you some images here of, uh, that I've taken with both the Rasa and the 92 millimeter uh, astrophysics refractor. But I would definitely caution, I think this is at the limit. Definitely probably need a counterweight shaft to be real safe with a counterweight. But this has worked for me with the spiked feet on the lightweight tripod. Again, you have a different heavier tripod uh, in some way to offset uh, maybe a wider spread of tripod leg. You're probably in no, the problem isn't what the mount can handle. Just go with the standard recommendations on the mount handling it. It's really just talking about the off, the off center weight that the scope combination with the tripod base would start to give. So, but 
but it starts to kind of make things more complicated, which is what I didn't want to do with the setup. I want to keep it as nice and simple as possible. So this setup with the lightweight tripod, the AM5, and the Rasa works, but I like the 92 millimeter. So I really recommend uh, the AM5 mount for astrophotography. It'd be great for visual alt uh, viewing as well. And I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm gonna end with some images I've taken with the AM5, a couple of different scope setups with Rasa and the 92 millimeter refractor. I definitely would never put the 130 astrophysics refractor on here. I think that's definitely too much for stability and for that type of resolution that you're gonna be looking for. I don't think, I think you're really starting to even challenge the, the AM5 mount for its uh, capacity there. But uh, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this little review and insight into the AM5. Drop me a line in the comments or send me an email if you have any questions or other insight into this. Thanks, and I uh, hope you guys have clear skies this winter.